Man, got to get your thoughts on this. Um, when 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 the Republicans gave y'all hell, yeah, uh, booted you, Representative Justin Jones out. Uh, they did not do Representative uh, Gloria Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, the next day, Vice President Harris came to uh, Nashville, stood with y'all. Yeah. Really powerful rally. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of just the energy yeah. that you've seen from? folk in the wake of Joe Biden announcing that re-election and then her assuming the mantle. Yeah, I have not seen excitement like this from the Democratic ticket probably since President Obama uh, in one of the first races, right, in 08. Uh, to have had Vice President Harris come to Tennessee after our expulsion was her making a statement about democracy, making a statement about ending the gun violence epidemic that too few politicians have been willing to do. And so I am on the Vice President Kamala Harris for President train tough because I understand that she aligns with our values and is going to represent and put our issues first uh, as she continues to do this work and do this role. But the energy from young people, right. from millennials, from Gen Z was not there right. in this way before this announcement. And I, but, but I think the energy in so many levels. So, of course, Women with Black Women was on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of the co-hosts of Women with Black Men on Monday. Mm -hmm. Latinas met on Tuesday. Yeah. South Asian women, they had more than 2,500, uh, 3,300 Latinas mm -hmm. on Tuesday, 2,500 South Asian women oh, yeah. on Wednesday. 200,000 white women last night. Yeah. Uh, they've raised $8.5 million. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Skolnick is putting together white men. Yeah. You had black gay men mm -hmm. who were meeting, Gen Z's meeting. Yeah. So what's interesting is all of these people are realizing they don't have to wait Come on. for somebody to hand them a baton. That's right. That's they right. realize, wait a minute, we can organize this thing on Zoom, on StreamYard, on right. platform. That's right. Somebody just has to call a meeting. That's it. That's it. And sometimes that's what it takes. It takes the courage of somebody to say, wait, I have power. There you go. And I think when we are living in a situation where we feel so disempowered, you see the news, you see a white supremacist run for president always on TV. It can it can deflate your own sense of authority and power right. that you have to actually contribute to make change, to have the courage to do something impactful. And what you have done, uh, many congratulations and thank yous on behalf of black folk uh, and this country and what other people are doing, that fire that has been ignited in folks can't be stopped. And recognizing that we do have power in this moment in time is one of the best defenses that we have in a democracy. See, that's part of our power, right? People power. Right. That people can do things that the government yep. can't stop, that they yep. can't silence you for, that they can't stop you from doing. And organizing, black folk have been doing that a long time. Yep. And so the fact that our, our siblings, brothers and sisters, and so many other communities are taking on that mantle and doing this work is extremely important because it's going to be an expensive election. It's going to be an important election, and it's going to require all of us. And I think that solidarity that's being built across race, across gender, across class, across organizations is the exact thing that we need in this moment in time because that's what the moment in time requires. That was a moment last night. Uh, on the white women call that was quite interesting. Uh, and one of them said, black women know how to organize and mobilize, so we should let them lead. Mm. They're 6% of the population and have a more dramatic effect than we do, mm. and we're 47%. Lord have mercy. Did she tell the truth? And in fact, they tell actually... The connected and reached out to Joteka Edie mm -hmm. and the black women, women, black women to help them organize their call. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, Shannon Watts, oh, yeah. who put the call out, mm -hmm. I had talked to Shannon the night before and I said, hey, I said, one of the limitations of the black women, their call, which they've been done for four years, mm -hmm. they only did it in Zoom, it wasn't public. Mm -hmm. I said, when we did our call, I purposely said, uh, we're gonna do it on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitch. Yeah. So I told her, make sure that y'all don't just stream in Zoom. Mm -hmm. So Zoom shut down several times, mm -hmm. but they had almost 30,000 who were on YouTube. Yeah. So she was like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. and so again, that's where I say, you use expertise and share it and share to it. help somebody else. And share it. And that's the thing. We got to realize that power is meant to be shared. Resources are meant to be shared. But that type of thinking, which uh, Democrats oftentimes think about more, but black women in particular have thought about more for generations, is what has gotten us to the place where we still have a democracy. Right. We can't forget that that 2020 election wouldn't have been won in the way that it was without black women, particularly in Georgia, particularly Stacey Abrams, who you know very well. And I think for white folks who are organizing and who are saying that they care in this moment, it takes that. It takes calling you. It takes calling black leadership and saying, hey, what is the best way for me to do this work? Because what we don't need for you to do is say we just need black folk to lead. And so I'm going to sit down. Right. It's like we need black people to lead and I'm going to help. Right. right. I'm going to be a co-conspirator. I'm going right. to join you in all the ways that I can with my time, my energy, my resources, Boy. my power. And I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow. Or I'm going to follow you. 
because followership is an underrated form of leadership. Yep. And that is also needed. Follow. And in this moment, we all need to be following this black woman to the White House. And it's not without, uh, and I know for white folk, y'all got to put something at risk. Black people put things at risk all the time. But for white people, when you meet Uncle Racist Joe uh, or, or Jimmy or Fred or right. Ted or Racist Susie and Suzette, you got to say, no, I understand what's at stake. And I know my role here as a person of privilege, as a person with means, as a person who this country has been built to benefit, that I got I got a role and a responsibility to do this. And it can't just yep. fall on the shoulders of black people. Also, I think what we have to do, I think we have to be very careful when somebody comes late to mm-hmm. the party. Yep. So... We, you take what happened in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Y'all have been fighting. Folks have been fighting when it comes to uh, gun control. Yeah. The shooting takes place. Mm-hmm. And these white women wake up. They wake up. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. these white women are descending on the state capitol. That's right. And now all of a sudden, these white women start getting treated the way black folks black have been treated. The whole time. So when they're just sitting in a meet, the whole time. holding a sign, and the Republicans kick them out. They're like, With state troopers. wait, wait, hold up. We're just holding a sign. Yeah. They fought, they got to see mm-hmm. what mistreatment by police or abuse of power was. Looks like. And I think that that absolutely, that has woken up. Oh, yeah. A lot of those white women in Tennessee, mm-hmm. you now have folk who are running for office. That's right. Who are challenging uh, the Republicans the Republic, there. They are. Many who ran unopposed. Mm-hmm. And so I had some folk who's like, man, well, by the time the white women, I said, listen. I'm not going to sit here and say it's about time. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy when somebody decides to say, I'm in. I'm in. I mean, and that we need to, uh, as people who are in this movement for justice, rooted in love, we need to welcome everybody whenever they come in. Because people have been at this plow longer than I've been alive. Right. And it's only been because people were at the plow when I was doing something else, when I wasn't paying as much attention, when I wasn't reading as much, when I wasn't engaged as much, that the moment that I was able to come in and help fight a pipeline in our community. Right. It was folks who were organizing for decades around environmental justice. Right. Like uh, the courage that we had uh, in Tennessee with the 7000 people marching, that black moms who have been going to that state capitol for decades asking for them to do something about gun violence. And so we just have to be humble in some part and just remember somebody was doing the work before you, before you got there. That's right. And for white women and for white folk who are joining, welcome. And it's time to put your hands on something because there is, uh, the book says, right, that there's many, uh, there's a lot of work in the vineyard for people to do. But I think we welcome people wherever they come, when they come into the movement, because there's so much to do in this moment in time. I, um, I've said this a lot to folk who are millennial and Gen Z. Cause always, and I know you hear it as well. They'll be like, man, I'm so sick of all these old folks running. And my response is, old folk vote. Old I'm like, folk vote. I'm like, you, you can be mad, Period. but the highest voting group is 65 plus. 65 plus. Every the time. second highest Every is 55 plus. Every I election. said, you millennial Gen Z, you actually have the numbers. That's right. But if you don't use your power, That's right. you can't get mad when you had, you're like, man, man, why we got a Joe Biden? I said, let me remind y'all, there was 15 other people running. It was. You had a choice. Tell the truth. Just and so the that's truth. the thing. So how, how do you, how do you convey to millennials and Gen Z's, you have untapped power. That's right. That's right. Don't complain. Mm-hmm. Do what them 65 plus folk, they use it. They use it every time. They, they, uh, older folk use their voice and they use their vote. And what I've learned, they show up, they show up. That's what I'm saying. Democracy isn't just going to the polls. Talk about cutting Social Security, Medicare. Folks will be starting to call. They'll find out how to send emails. They will go to the Congress. They will go wherever they need to go to defend what they know are there or what we know are rights that people have earned. And you're going to love this. So when Jesse Jackson Jr. was in Congress, Uh a group of young folks came to him. Man, if you don't do this, 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 and we're going to we're going to vote you out. Mr. Junior said, y'all ain't going to do a damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you see that building right there? He said, that's a high rise. Mm-hmm. He said, in that high rise, he said, uh, old people. And they mostly women. He said, that's what I'm talking to. Yeah. He said, y'all ain't going to do a damn thing. What he was trying to get them to understand is, he said, all them old black folk. They going to the polls. They going to come out that high rise Every- with their walkers. Mm-hmm. And they scooters. They, with their scooters, he said, and they gonna vote. They, and his absolutely. deal is, if he said, if you want me, that's right, 
to listen to you. That's right. You gonna have to sit here and maximize your power. That's exactly listen, right. Listen, I know. That's exactly when you right. Had, when you got stuff, you know who gonna exactly show up. Right. I, it's gonna be them seasoned saints. Saints every time. Faithful. They faithful. They faithful. They say if you knock on that door, and, and, and Auntie Sarah Gladney say I'll be there tomorrow. Auntie Sarah Gladney coming. Whether her cousin, her nephew, her grandchild taking it, whatever the case is, she going. Right. And she going to tell whoever in the car, you come on in here too. Right. And as well, a politician, and see, this is the thing, again, I'm not trying to diss millennials and Gen Z's. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get them to understand. As an elected official, mm -hmm. what you need to know is yeah. they going to show up. They going to show up. So when you like, hey, I need backup. That's right. You know it's going to be 50, 60, 70 of them. That's going to show up. They gray hair. That's exactly and right. And they're and they like, uh, Justin, baby, we here. We here. What you need us to do? <laughs> I'll tell you a case in point. When we when we were expelled, the day we were reinstated by the county commission, it was you know a couple thousand people who marched. But you know the contingent that I recognized called my Boxtown contingent. All 65 plus year old black women who had their first campaign shirt. You know a lot of people got shirts after. Right. Had their first campaign shirt on. Said we here, we here. It's that faith, they were. They are faithful to democracy, they're faithful to the cause, and then they are faithful to the people right. who show up and fight for them. And for young people who I talk to and people in my age group, I tell them it's power. It, it is about power. Voting is you making a statement about yes. what you believe power should be doing. Do you believe it should be doing something about health care? Do you believe it should be doing something about the environment and climate? Do you believe it should be doing something about poverty? In our state, we gave $2 billion to corporations this past session. Yep. We could have ended poverty in the state of Tennessee this year. And I try to tell people this stuff ain't far off. Right. You know, like we're in some la-la line. We had $2 billion yep. dollars that could have ended poverty in our state. Y'all, it is whether or not we are going to be politically engaged or we're going to be legislatively annihilated. It's just two options. And so we have to vote, and then we have to show up at those county commission meetings and those right. city council meetings see, that's and those school the, board see, that's meetings. that's the piece. What I, what, what I say is voting is the end of one process and the beginning of another. Yes. You can't, it's not just, well, I voted. No, no. You got to then be at that council meeting, that school board meeting, Holding people like county Come commissioners on. meeting. Come on. And, 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 I, and, and, only, and because the reason I understand that my parents were co-founders of a civic club, Seriously. Uh, right. And they, listen, never went to college, but they partnered with other people. Mm -hmm. They cared about their community. So at seven, eight, so I saw, yeah. I testified, I spoke at the city council meeting, what, ninth, 10th grade? Maybe I was in the eighth grade. I remember, I remember a black city councilman, Ernest McGowan, when he came to our uh, Catholic Church Bazaar, and I was jamming him up on some cuts. And, you know, he answered my first question, my second question. But I hit him with the third, fourth, and the fifth question. Yeah. And he couldn't answer. I said, next time you come to this church, yeah. I'm going to need you to have some answers. Answer. And he was looking around like, who the hell? Yeah, is this? Little kid. kid. Who, who but, is this and where he come from? Right. He was like, who is this little? But that's only because of what I saw. And so what I'm always trying to explain to millennials and Gen Z, it's like, yo, you can't complain because them old folk are in the game. In the game. They in the game, they've learned the game, they understand the game, and they know how to hold people accountable to it. And all I'm trying to get younger people to pay attention to, and even for like our, our, our seasoned saints who are engaged with me and they're super supportive, I'm like, y'all, but if the road ain't paved, and that ain't a state road, that's right. a city councilor there we you go. need to call into our, 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 our community. Or if you're in a rural area, that's a county that's road. That's a county road. So you, you can't call, call Justin. That's the that's county commission. It's the county commission. But they're like, but you respond. I said, so you know how you get people to respond? Right. Every, every second Tuesday, they have those meetings. And it's something called public comment. Boom. And it's time for me to come see you. So I told them, I said, we can organize a carpool. There you go. And let's 10 of us go. I'll there take 10 folk, 10 there good you go. folk to say, hey, we tried to get in touch with you. And it, we have to make power more accessible to our community yep. because when you have, have gotten conditioned to being disempowered, yep. I think it takes some retraining and some re-education about like, y'all, we are the ones who continue to change and transform America. Yep. Like it's black folk who did march, who did show up, who did hold mayors accountable and leaders accountable. Like that is a part of our inheritance. Yes. And reclaiming that in this moment, I think, is so important, particularly when you see on the national level what's happening uh, and, and, the, and the move toward authoritarianism. When you look at state houses and you see the moves toward authoritarianism, it's like, so where does power really reside? Right. These state houses, these city councils, these that's county right. who's banning books? It ain't, it that's ain't right. the president of the United States, y'all. That's your school board. Right. And like, it's our You got resistance. some school board election with two, 300 yeah, votes. Like two, 300 votes. You telling me we can't get 10, 10 churches together? Boom. And go elect who we need to there be elected at the school board? 
And those votes matter so much because they're lower turnout. Yeah. And so, yeah, you vote for you, but you vote for the what? 300,000 people yep. who ain't coming up? Like those elections have, I supported a candidate for city council this past election. She had to do a runoff, close runoff. She won by 14 votes. Boom. One church bus. Boom. 14 votes. It's like those 14 people just changed the direction of the city council. You it go. turned our city council to a majority woman city council for the first time in, ten, in Memphis and Tennessee history. It's like, y'all, we have power. 14. We got to reclaim it. 14. I never yep. forget it. For, a church church yep. van. Yep. A church van did it. But we have to relearn. Yeah. Like, oh, wait. It's the person who I can see. It's the person who I, who I can go and meet who actually can help to change yep. and transform my life. Yeah. Well, I, I just I, 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 I try to as much as I can tell millennials and Gen Z, this is not hard. No. It's actually not hard. No. You just got to show. You got to show. You just got to show. Do yep. what those who came before us did, and we're going to be all right. All right, Doc. Always good to see you, man. Good to see you too. Keep swinging. Yeah, we're doing it together. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Tastes like man. Curl Prep Natural Hair Solutions at curlprep.com. I'm in shock. For curls, locks, braids, twists, and even those wigs and extensions. Women, men, and children are loving this line. Look at this video and you be the judge. People line up to see this product in action at hair shows, and when they take a seat and try it, they don't believe it's their hair. Buy the products at curlprep.com. It works on all hair types. Use code ROLAND, that's R-O-L-A-N-D, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount. Parents, remove the ouch. You will love this system because you can comb the product through your child's hair with your fingers. It's all at curlprep.com. Use code ROLAND, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount.